Lady Ada, what is this? Hi, everybody, and welcome to Show and Tell. It's me, Lady Ada. With me is Mr. Lady Ada. And we're broadcasting live from the Adafruit headquarters in downtown Manhattan. But enough about us. It's time to check in with people in the maker community around the world as they come by the show and tell and show and share what they're working on. We're going to be here till about 7.50, so take two to three minutes when we call on you. Let me get your mic, show us your project, and we're going to be able to get to everybody. Hi, okay. Dean. Uh, let's kick it off with some Adafruit peeps, and then we'll go to other visitors. First up, Melissa. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Melissa. Hello. What are you up to? I am, have been working on the display shapes, and I decided to add a couple more shapes here. Oh, it's rebooting on me. Okay. Uh, Ooh. You can kind of see it uh, on the this side here when I have it at this angle, but I added a polygon, so you could just name the points, and it'll draw it all out for you. I and I added triangle. a lion one here, too. Triangle. Triangle's the best shape I heard. Oh, I had tr I added the triangle a few months back, but... Oh, okay. uh, uh, I actually take the triangle and I based it on the polygon now. So nice. uh, it wasn't like re having duplicate code that way. Sweet. We can do like rhombuses and stuff. Looks good. Yep. All right. Nice work, Melissa. More shapes. Yeah. Oh, there. That's a good angle. There. Shapes, ahoy. Okay. Nice. Yes. It, it almost looks like some of the intro graphics to Miami Vice. <laughs> <laughs> Stylish. All right. Okay. Next up, JP. Hey, how are you guys doing? Wow. Oops. Oh, hey, that's also hey. we have some. Yeah, that was just, I was just testing. It's just, you know, we're just playing around there. I'm just checking. That's testing. actually a nice segue because uh, my project I'm working on has a lovely Ruiz Brothers designed case. Uh, what I have is a clue inside of this lovely little case, which has uh, mounting for uh, bicycle handlebars. You can see my bike is back here. Uh, and so I'm working on essentially an extension of what we've been doing with the uh, previous two projects, the heart rate monitor and the uh, speed and cadence sensors for the bicycle. And, uh, and so this is a project that uh, Dylan has been working on. And I'm just going to restart it real quick. Um, what you'll see, it's a work in progress, but we should see it won't focus too well, is uh, I've got a blown out graphic of a bicycle on there. Yeah. And now it's connecting to a few things. So the exciting thing about this project is it's going to be getting data from my heart rate monitor as well as the speed sensor and the uh, cadence sensor on the crank of the, of the crankshaft of the bike. But then it's also going to be um, sending data back and forth with the phone so that it can get uh, song info. Um, and I think those are I think those are what we're going to display is all of those things. So it's it's sort of combining the uh, client and peripheral sides. Yeah. Of, uh, of and the, we did this. This is like the last four guides. You did the heart rate guide. You did the Apple Music service guide, and you did yeah. the cadence and speed guide. And now it's like mega project. These building blocks, and let's build a house. And yeah. that house is called Peloton. That's right, Piloton. Yeah, like your Peloton, except not. It's Pi, and it's uh, it's open source, and it's friendly, and don't sue us. Um, so <laughs> it's gonna be a really cool bike computer, and yeah, you could use it on like a stationary bike or a uh, real bicycle that's on on uh, an indoor training roller set or out in the real world if you dare. Um, and it'll give you all that uh, all that data that you can look at and see how your heart rate's doing, what song you're playing, and. Uh, as well as your speed. Maybe we'll control the song with like forward and back with the buttons too. That'd be fun. Oh yeah, that's true. We have, we have uh, the building blocks for doing that. So, yeah. Um, that's where we're headed with it. So if you have, uh, if you have ideas, let us know. We'll, we'll start posting some little videos and things of this as we're uh, working on it. And, uh, and we'll get a guide out that'll show you how you can build your own. Okay. Open source bicycle computers coming soon. Right on. Snake in its way to bicycles. Snakes can ride yeah. bicycles. They, they do love bikes. They do. A lot of people don't think that. They don't, they don't know that. It's true. All right. Coming soon from JP. And then tomorrow you'll be maybe showing off some of this. Or maybe yeah, I'll be showing some of this off on the show tomorrow. So come by and uh, see that and the Make Code Minute and uh, Game of the Week and all kinds of other good things. That's a good party over at JP's. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, JP. Next up, NP. No, and Pedro. Also doing some video. Okay. okay. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Yeah, so this week's project is a bit of a combination of 3D printing and some milling. So I'm wearing a black heart. Ooh, black oh gosh. Acrylic. And what's really cool about this acrylic is that it allows light to shine through. Like nicely. That's like cool. very nicely. Yeah, very nicely. So we have uh, the electronics are, well, the microcontrollers behind me. 
It's the Itsy Bitsy with the NRF 52840. And that means we can use the Bluefruit Elite Connect app to trigger some animations, like the classic Philby Rainbow Swirl. We could also use the color picker. So I can go to that and pick some different colors, like this teal. Or maybe we go purple. Drop the nice. Bit. And yeah, that, that LED acrylic, so good. Like, it is really nice. It's, it, what's interesting is you know it's so hard to show LEDs, but with this, it's like the color is really nice and saturated because it's it's bright, but it's still like bright enough to shine through, but dim enough that it like isn't bl blowing out your um, uh, camera. Yeah, it it looks really nice in daytime too. If you uh, yeah, yeah. daytime. Um, yeah, so I just shared a screen if we want to take a look at sort of next week's project. Pedro okay. is wearing it as well. Yeah, so we a little bit of finally a got our clue theme. in and oh, yeah. the announcement of uh, them being at PyCon for everybody. So, of course, I thought I'd make a little wearable. Everybody loves watches and it is compatible with lanyards too. So, you got little cat ears on there. So, you can put your lanyard on there and then just flex band and you have like access to all your ports and all that. So, we will release this next week. Nice, very fashionable. Yeah, and then a uh, little update to the bike mount one. Bill Binko suggested doing the quarter 20 as he always does. So we updated that, we'll send that off and have it. So you can be on more than just bikes, anything that has a quarter 20, you can attach. So you can have like a little monitor for your desktop. Accessibility. Release, release that the week after. Cool. So I'm really loving the red heart. I mean, it's actually just a really cool look. Yeah. Yeah, I really like how Pedro put that together. It's not like, you know, a, a milled PCB that's just strips that have been put together with packaging tape. <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> it's nice. It's a pretty nice technique. Check out the video in the learn guide, please. And, yeah. uh, all right. So uh, fashionable. And Thank a full you. hour on it on uh, 3D Hangouts. We show how we solder it together and all that tips and tricks on that. So tune in. All right. All right. Thanks, Thank folks. You. We'll be showing all the videos tonight on Ask an Engineer. Thank you. That's so sweet. Bye. Okay. Next up, Brian, what electronic goodies do you got to show? So a while back now, I put together the LPS 35HW pressure sensor. Uh, it was fun to do. Not long thereafter, um, we put out the LPS 33 pressure sensor made by ST. Uh, this one is special because it's got a teeny little hat on top that you can plug tubes into. Um, so I thought that'd be great for making a sip and puff. So we did that. So I'm going to pan my camera down. Hopefully this will work. Ooh. Uh, I was gonna poke that up. was that was Hello. elegant. Yes. Oh no. Okay, let's uh let's try this one. Uh that's out of focus, but you can see it change. So that's yeah, yeah, we understand. Right. What's going on? So uh, I've got this tube connected to the sensor and it's uh, going through the STM oh geez, what's the model number of that thing again? Uh, the ST um, feather. STM32 F405, that's it. Um, and so it's using, uh, right here, you can see we've got the STEMI QT cable going from here into the little screen and looping back around into the sensor. Um, and then got some CircuitPython code on there that's um, watching the pressure and will trigger different events depending on if you sip or puff. So let's see if it can go. Sip. Sip. Puff. Sip. Puff. No, puff. Sip. <laughs> yeah, and I can see it's like printing out some text as it's yeah. just, is it's um, detecting the different sips and puffs. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Oh, well, so much for that. Uh, no, no doubt. You can see it. <laughs> yeah, so um, I got the code together for that. I'm finishing up the guide, and uh, I think it should be out later this week. And I'm looking forward to seeing what people think. All right. Yeah, this is cool because it's uh, totally plug and play. Conf configurable with circuit python so like you don't have to know how to code you don't know how to solder you just plug it together and you can make accessibility technology really easily this is like the easiest easiest to build sip and puff yeah. ever yeah no it, it was i was pleasantly surprised like i knew the um stem qt stuff would make it super easy but then i, I discovered that the tubing we had in stock fits straight on there i was like wow this is meant to be yeah meant to be all, all right, right thank you so much Brian. sweet coming soon to a guide near you thank you brian Okay next, up. okay, next up, Paint Your Dragon, uh, known for his LED color swirl. Hi, yeah, isn't that funny? Um, I, I didn't write the color swirl, but um, I think it's like if you write a parody song, like everyone just says it's a Weird Al song, you okay. know? 
It's like yeah. there's NeoPixel code. Phil must have written it. So. Yeah, you're That's the so Kleenex of NeoPixels. That's what we say. Congratulations. Yeah. Anyway, I have a non-electronic thing I wanted to show. Uh, cosplay Twitter is all uh, excited over this. This is a uh, fake uh, chain mail made out of laser cut uh, EVA foam. Oh, cool. Huh. It's interesting because um, chain mail is really horrible both to make and to wear. Uh, right. It takes forever to, to assemble the stuff and it weighs a ton. Uh, this piece here weighs about six grams and huh. uh, there's 29 grams in an ounce. So this weighs basically zero. Yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, the, the same as the human soul. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's black, so it doesn't doesn't photograph well. But yeah. anyway, um, if people are interested in this for cosplay, um, the person who came up with the scheme, if you if you don't have a laser cutter, you can go to their website foamarmory.com and order like a kit that'll give you about 10, 10 pieces like this. Um, don't recall the price. If you do have a laser cutter, they made their files available on Thingiverse. Uh, their name is Ben E on Thingiverse. And uh, you can download it. You can uh, you can laser cut it, um, or something. I'm curious about. There is uh, EVA foam 3D filament now for uh, mm. printers. So if you have a big enough print bed, uh, you should be able to. You know, it would be zero waste because it's additive manufacturing. I haven't played with this yet, but it sounds interesting. This is this is done with the laser cut scheme. Yeah. So, that's awesome. I mean, it looks easy to put together. You just kind yeah. of like weave it together instead of having to like do each ring. Yeah, you know, pliers pinching little metal rings together. Yeah, I made a chainmail shirt as a kid. It was months. It's horrible. Yep. It's horrible. Um, anyway, it's you, too. You, you got what eight months to Halloween to, to work on stuff. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. For Always learning. thinking ahead. To the next Halloween. All right. Next up, let's go to Alex Glow. Hey, Alex. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Not bad. Uh, I don't have anything like super spectacular to show, but I thought I'd hop on because I've been playing with the cricket and the super playground. That is first. super spectacular. You're, you are <laughs> spectacular, yeah. Alex. We've been following the project. This is a oh, cool project. I'm excited about yeah. it. Well, so um, the last video that I put up, I was struggling with uh, making some laser cut cardboard bits for the sock puppet and now I've got something uh, and I'm like completely redesigning how I want to do it because what I want to do with this guy is I want to mount snapchat spectacles on top I made a hexter really snapchat nice. on <laughs> account and I'm trying to figure out how you snapchat at the same time yeah I don't know look at him but um that looks cool that's cool stuff so. and yeah. I can to events and like have him like take pictures of people in the office and stuff but the thing is, should I make his mouth go like that? Which I think is the best, because it's a sock puppet. Or mm -hmm. should I give him little cardboard eyebrows? Oh, you know what? I can just put this on like so. And then have those like push the button. Because the problem is like pushing the button, right? Yeah. I think uh, eyebrows I think eyebrows are cool because think, like they're so evocative. They're more emotion than, than a mouth. Yeah, and maybe I can get both, but I just need to pick which way the ma the button is actuated. I it's see. like this super annoying little thing yeah. on top. Uh, okay. And ideally, it's going to be like voice controlled with the edge badge. Um, just say like cheese or something, and it and it takes a picture. Okay. Maybe some yeah. false positives, but yeah, ah, you know, AI's like that. But what's so you know, so what? You have you have a lot of cool extra photos. Yeah, right. And then All you right. can always delete them if whatever. All right. Oh, good stuff this happening. is really cool. If you want a sticker, we can send you one. And thank you for continuing to sure. pioneer the new industry of companion bots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jorvan has one. Uh, jo uh, He's got like one. Has one. Yeah. It, it's really neat to see because it's one of the things. It's like, how can you do animatronics? And that's why we did cricket. Like, you could be your own Imagineer. You can make all the things that um, maybe you've seen at an amusement park or wanted to build your own robot, but then could they have some social aspects to them? Yeah, I've been trying to build all of them from new systems every time, and working with the Cricut is such a—it's so much easier. I can like yeah. leave the technical stuff and just do the creative part. Which yeah, is so much that's easier. what that's yeah. what we're trying to do. It's why it's called the Creative Robotic Interface Kit. Yeah, I did not realize that. That's what Cricut stands for. Yeah, it's so it, cool. One of the things we thought is like, imagine if you're doing robotics, you don't have to reinvent everything every single time. Like, okay, I need to do a power supply. I need to do it every single time, and by the time you get to the thing yeah. you want to do. Maybe you've even graduated, or the class is over, or life has gone on, or you run out of money. You know, there's so many <laughs> things that happen, and like, okay, how can you get going? Really or email fast? happens. Yeah, or just whatever. So, okay, cool. Well, we'll keep posting up the updates that you Thanks, posted on Hackster. 
Okay. All right, cool. Sweet. Next up, we're gonna go to Liz. Yeah, we're gonna go to Drew. Drew and, and Helen, and Helen, then and then Liz, Liz and, then and then I think that's Richard. Richard. Richard? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. All right. Let's. Okay. Uh, Drew and Helen, give us your update. Hi. Uh, real quick. Uh, this is uh the Open Harbor Summit wrist badge. Uh, that's right. We have the buttons working now in Circuit Python, so you probably can't see with my camera, but I love how there's a little blinka in the when you have the ruffle on the display. Yeah. It's really, yeah. really cute. Um, and then Helen has a pretty cool project to show uh, you. So I've been working on a embroidered analog synthesizer. Um, it's a crackle box, um, and I finally made it work tonight. Um, it sounds kind of like noisy and rubbish, but it's kind of exciting. Yeah, I so, love rubbish synths. Yeah. Have a, have you, can you see that? So this yes. is oh, this is embroidered cropper thread. This is an LM386 chip. And then we've got two capacitors. And they're just hooked up with crocodile clips to this speaker that I found. Good. And a non-volt battery. Um, OK, let's see if I can make it. Ooh. And so on. There we That's go. nice and rubbery. Love it. <laughs> there we go. I'm not Very happy. punk. All yeah. right. Outstanding. Very Berlin. And tonight we'll be showing uh, more of the updates on the um, Open Hardware badge. Good work. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah. Alex and Michael who are working on that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Sweet. Thanks, All Alex. Bye-bye. Right. Liz. Liz. Hello, Liz. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Good. Good. Um, so I had a learn guy go up this week on the uh, Bluetooth synth. Uh, so when you press the key, you get these lovely 8-bit tones. I'll okay. turn it over Bluetooth. Uh, not a rubbish synth. I mean, rubbish synths are good, and this is a 3D, 3D synth. Yes. You can almost form a band with the show and tell participants. We're getting closer. I was thinking it was a very musical night. Yeah. Um, so that finished up. And then the new thing I've been working on is doing some MIDI stuff with CircuitPython. Um, and I'm going to share my screen real quick uh, just to show it uh, working. Um, so I've got the LIS3DH accelerometer. Um, and uh, when I tilt it, it's moving this mod wheel here. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Uh, so the, um, trellis, the Neo trellis. That we, I was playing around yeah. with. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. So it's upright, it's at zero, and then if it goes yeah. up or down, it'll go all the way up to 127. And I've got some polyphony going and can also control pitch bend and velocity. So that's fun. Yeah, so that's what I've been working on. Right. Cool. Can you, can you play something yet? Or uh, um, So I can, but I can't get the audio through. Yeah, come back. It's in the computer. Yeah. yeah. Come back. Yeah. Come back next week or post something on Twitter when you can record. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, I've got some demos on Diode Zone. Um, oh, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, if you um, if you add Adafruit with those, I'll yeah. get them in the newsletter and more because I'm trying to find more. There's, there's enough stuff now where there's like music made with Circuit Python. Right. Yeah. And I thought that would be kind of neat to to start to have like a, a playlist of like if you want to listen to the sounds of of Blinka. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Liz. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Thanks, Liz. Always right. bringing the tunes. And then last up. Expo. Expo. Expo? Expo seems. Hello. Hi. I don't think you can hear us. Oh. All right. You want to do Maker Charades? Yeah. You want, can you hear us? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. I don't think so. OK. All right, well, we'll see Maker Charades. You think he's doing Maker Charades? Okay. Okay. It's first, a pair of goggles. First syllable is. More pixel, more pixel goggles. goggles. <laughs> okay, so that looks like a battery pack. Yeah, there's like a, a USB battery pack. And then there's a new pixel ring. There's a new pixel ring. And he's going to turn it on, I bet. And, it's just, and there's a. Oh, ooh, there's a clue in the back. Okay. Ooh. All right, that was my first clue. Ooh, the first clue. Right, can you turn it on or no? Okay, maybe okay. that's the battery. So it's a battery that's pack switch. plugged into the clue, and then the okay. clue. Is maybe the when you I think it's in progress. I think it isn't yeah, it doing progress. anything yet, but it's gonna do something soon. He's okay. just, he just got the clue because it's running the demo, and you're yeah. gonna like check out Circuit Python. You're gonna get the NeoPixel stuff going, and then maybe we next guess, week. Did we guess pretty much what it is? Okay, yeah. Good. Next All week, right. come back and show us your uh, glowing. I mean, it looks cool now. Don't get me wrong, but come back and we want to see some LEDs glowing out. Okay. 
I think you can do it. All right. Well, thank you so much. This is cool because it's a clue project. It already looks like a magnifying glass. I love how it's like, it's kind of very science fiction y. It's yeah. like, there's like alligator clips and wires and stuff. All right. We don't need words. These projects are powerful. I know. This is cool. This is Neopixel safety right. goggles, too. Oh, also, Pac Man. Pac Man, Pac Man, Pac Man, Pac Man. Pac -Man. Is it like a custom PCB? It looks cool. Neopixel. All right. Well, you goggles. know how to get a hold of us. Email support at adafruit.com if you want a sticker. Mm -hmm. And if you want to email about that project, if you have any photos or updates, just email pt at adafruit.com. All right. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. That was our All show right. tonight. That was an epic show. Wow. Tonight. Thank you, everybody. This is our favorite half an hour every week. We do show and tell. Um, we'll see everybody on Ask an Engineer in just a couple minutes. And we'll see you here next week, 7 30 p.m. Eastern time. Every Wednesday, show and tell. Come everybody. by, get free stickers. Yeah, free stickers. Thanks, everybody. Good bye night. Bye.